So our next design is gonna take a little bit more skill, so we saved that for last. Go ahead and do both of these at the same time, at least get them traced on. So this is a good one to practice your beveling, your cutting for your scroll work. So I'm just gonna put a little radius up here. Our stem work's gonna flow out from. So there will be some background noise. Chad's over there working on another project. We can't exactly stop the shop. Missed a piece here. Just go ahead and draw that in there. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead with our swivel knife first. I like to have my piece as free as possible when I'm doing swivel knife work, because a lot of times, especially on stuff, that's like scroll work, you can turn it and rotate it as you're cutting and make smoother lines. If it's not free to turn, then you gotta do all the work by hand, which isn't a bad thing. There's some bigger projects that you're gonna have to run your swivel knife in a way that you get all the action out of your swivel knife barrel, but when at all possible, I turn my work. Once again, the pattern is a suggestion. If you go a little bit off of your lines, just make an adjustment and make sure it's smooth, flows well. Sometimes easier said than done. Okay, now that we got our swivel knife work done, we're ready to bevel these guys. Gonna go ahead, start with our number two Barry King checkered beveler. Start with this line, and everything's gonna flow out from there. So I'll do everything I can from one side. And I'll turn it. So we start out, this one we want to start heavy because it comes from underneath that. This one we're going to start out a little bit lighter. Whenever you start these lines, start them a little bit lighter with the beginning there and then progressively get heavier at the end. And that'll keep everything flowing through smoothly. You can use this bigger beveler on this small piece if you tip it off to the side or you can pick up your number one and get around that corner a little bit easier. I'll go ahead and show you on this one. It's just going to make that radius a lot smoother. You can keep it flat. You use that smaller beveler. Sometimes I use the smaller beveler to get around the tight corners. Other times I'm lazy and I just tip the bigger beveler off to the side. Since I'm already on this side here, go ahead and taper off. Taper off. Now 
This one's gonna go fairly hard clear up to where it starts because it's also coming out from under that piece. Make sure and connect all your lines the best that you can. Okay, now that we got our beveling done, we come back with our bar grounder. Pretty decent sized bar grounder. Usually I'll use a little smaller one. For smaller projects. A lot of people worry about getting all their bar grounding perfectly lined up. And a buddy of mine, Andy Stevens said, it's negative space. People shouldn't be focusing on the negative space to begin with. Don't worry about it. And I haven't. So now we're going to come back with our slightly roughed up smooth thumbprint. Very keen. Go ahead and shade these stickers. So go ahead and use the small end and just taper back here. Soften up as you come back. I want this rolling around right with the curve of your thumbprint. So we're going to go ahead and uh, leave that scroll plain there. And come in, do a little mule's footing. Usually hold that tool straight towards me. I find that's the easiest way to line these up. I'm gonna kind of gradually hit it lighter. Taper off there. Come back with our swivel knife, do some deco cuts. It's a pretty simple pattern, so you don't have to do a whole lot, but once again, it's really good to practice the basics on a small project like this. So with their deco cuts, your swivel knife has to be square to the le leather that you're cutting. And so when you have a piece that has got some shading on it already, you want to tip your blade to where it's cutting square on the piece of leather. So we're going to just outline the front with a shortcut and then outline the back. We're starting out deeper and fading off. And you just want it to flow around there on these stickers. Shortcut in the front, and a long cut in the back, tapering off. And you can kind of do a couple of cuts like that. Trailing down, everything flowing back to the point of origin. Don't forget.
forget you can turn your leather. So for this bigger scroll here, I'm just gonna start out, same deal. We're gonna kinda outline it. We're gonna roll around to about there. Do a little cut flows into that cut. I'm going to start at the back of it. Roll around. Little cut flows into it. And then come right in there. And there you have it. On the little stem work ones, we're going to go ahead and hit them with the saddle lac. You want to use this in a well ventilated area preferably with a fan blowing away from you. There's probably a reason it's illegal in California, but it's pretty much my favorite sealer as far as antiquing belts and uh, different projects. So we're gonna go ahead and let all of these dry for about 20 minutes, half hour. Then we'll come back with our Phoebe's Sheridan Brown antique paste and give them some antique. Okay, so go ahead and put this on here. So usually I'll let these guys dry overnight before I put the top coat on. Just makes that antique really uh, dry good so it doesn't peel out of there. And uh, it'll be a little foggy when we come back to it, but we'll put a top coat on it and it'll brighten right back up and look real nice. And then I'll hit these with our saddle act. You wanna shake it up real good. Get a good top coat on them. And clean the top out. Call it good. Well, thanks for stopping by. Hope you like this video and instructions on how to do these. We're going to go ahead and put the uh, earring hangers on them, take pictures. You can check out our website where we sell the blanks to see the finished product photo. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.